I'm... State of the Union. Let's check it out. August the 8th, just two days before the debate. Let's see what Cotton got to say. Is a supporter of Donald Trump's Republican Senator Tom Cotton. Thank you so much for being here. Nice to see you in person. Thanks, Dan. Good to be with you. I, I want to start with some of the endorsements that Kamala Harris got this week, particularly from former Congresswoman Liz Cheney and her father, the former Republican Vice President Dick Cheney. I, we were talking before uh, in the break. I Two Republicans that are just sellouts and want to keep the current administration at, on top. Covered the Bush Cheney administration. I traveled a lot with Dick Cheney. Uh, one of the most conservative uh, Republicans alive today. It's really remarkable that he endorsed a Democrat. What does that tell you about Donald Trump? Well, it was a remarkable time in politics. You have Dick Cheney endorsing a Democrat and you have a Kennedy endorsing a Republican. I, I think what it tells us is that there's a lot of ferment in American politics, but in the end, endorsements are not gonna make the difference in this race. What's gonna make the difference is their records. This is a very unusual presidential election. We have a former president running for office, first time in more than hundred years. People remember that when Donald Trump was in office, prices were low, wages were high. We had peace and stability around the world. We all have money in our pocket. Times were much, much better. And I hope more and more people wake up. It's not about the blue team or the red team. It's about how you were when he was in office and what he's going to be bringing next time he comes back to office. Kamala Harris, as vice president, has brought us record high inflation. We have a wide open southern border and we have war and we turn around the world. So I know that endorsements sometimes make news, but most Americans are really making their decisions based on the records of these two candidates. People remember that we had good times with Donald Trump. Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have brought us very bad times. I hear you about endorsements. We don't really know the impact that they have all the time. RFK Jr. hasn't had been in elected office. Dick Cheney was vice president of the United States for eight years. He was a senior member of uh, the House. He was he was part of the deep state. Those are all in control of this country. All right. Those that we don't see that make decisions that we have no clue what they're doing. Chief of staff to Gerald Ford. He worked tirelessly to advance Republican policies for a long time. You don't think his uh, his endorsement of a Democrat with that kind of pedigree is going to make a difference with no, Dan, voters? No, I, I, really, I, I really don't. I, I or mean, never Trump but, voters who aren't sure about Harris? Well, I, I mean, some of this is probably that Donald Trump beat his daughter in her last election by 39 points. I think most Americans are going to look at this race and compare the records they have against the very unusual race. Yep. When you have a president who served in office, who brought good times to America, and you have Kamala Harris, a San Francisco liberal, who has brought to America exactly what you see in San Francisco as yep. well. I want to turn to a, a very different topic, and that is something that the Justice Department uh, said this week. They detailed a Russian government effort to stoke divisions in the U.S. using front Russia, 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 another Ro Russian hoax. And people just got to wake up and realize that they keep doing this every single election. Like, are you just calling us stupid to our faces? Like, Russia, 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 come on now. Organizations and social media, prominent right-wing influencers like Dave Rubin and Benny Johnson, uh, who have ties to Tenet Media. Now, that's a company that the Justice Department says was being funded by Russian operatives. You sit on the Intelligence Committee. How worried are you that right-wing influencers, people who do have an impact on your constituents? You know what? I wish I would have got some of that $10 million. That's insane. You're telling me that with $10 million, they can influence the election? Again, another Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. Let's see what he says are being funded either directly or indirectly by the Russian government in order to make an impact on this election? Well, first off, Dana, we haven't been in session, so I haven't seen any intelligence about this matter. I've only seen the allegations I've read in the newspaper. Um, people should not knowingly take money from the government of Russia or Iran or China or any other adversarial nation to try to influence the election. But I also think it's fair to say that uh, a few memes or videos in the vast sea of political commentary is not going to make much of a difference. Exactly. Thank you. In this election, nor has it in past elections as well. What did make a difference in the last election is the lies about Hunter Biden's laptop. 
that more than four dozen former intelligence officials lied about yep. in the middle of that campaign. Yep. And most networks, to include this one, bought that lie hook, line, and sinker. That did make a difference in the election. But I think a few videos or commentaries, which again, you shouldn't do if you're out there in the business of commentating on elections, um, is not going to make a difference in the vast sea of commentary we see. Exactly. No more Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. It sounds to me like you're downplaying the fact that Vladimir Putin is using people like... She's overplaying. She's making it look like a disaster, like it's the end of democracy. Uh, Dave Rubin, whose show you went on in February as a tool for his propaganda. So I, I'm not downplaying Vladimir Putin's designs or Xi Jinping's designs or the Ayatollah's designs to try to influence our election. But using money, using money to try to promote memes or videos on the internet is not exactly going to make a huge difference. Again, you shouldn't knowingly do that. I don't know if any of these but people you, knowingly did it. Do you know it. young but, people who but, get, they all, some people only get their information from those memes and but, videos. But Dana, what, what would really would, would be catastrophic is if a foreign government say hacked into the voter registration system during voting or hacked into election machines and erased votes or turned off the electricity in a big city on election that serious election day those are things that are serious threats a few videos and those active threats are you uh, is that i am worried about those kind of threats sure is that based on what you're being briefed on it's based on the vulnerabilities that all of our infrastructure around the country has that that worries me a lot more than a few videos or memes. Again, this is the- Thank you. Videos and memes are not gonna switch the election like that. Come on now. The kind of thing that foreign governments like Russia does, and no one should knowingly and wittingly partake in it, but it's really not all that consequential in the grand scheme of things. I wanna ask you about another topic that is very much in the news this week, and that is uh, the uh, shooting in, in, in Georgia. Uh, we've all been seeing the texts, the heartbreaking texts. The shooting in Georgia, what it looks like was an LGBTQ member under this administration. Let's see what she says. Especially as parents uh, of students saying, I love you to their parents. Students using the shirts off their backs to try to save their teacher. Uh, Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance said after the shooting, quote, I don't like that this is a fact of life, adding, we don't have to like the reality that we live in, but it is the reality we live in. Do you accept that school shootings like this are just a way of life now? No, absolutely not. And J.D. Vance doesn't either. He said that he doesn't want them to be a fact of life. And this week, the Associated Press got ta caught distorting that quote from him so bad that they had to retract it. But here's what we also know about that shooting, even as we're still gathering all the facts it wasn't as bad as it might have been because there was a police officer on the school premises that was able to neutralize the shooter. Kamala Harris wants to take police officers out of school. She said it in the past. That's her position. It's not surprising because she's consistently taken positions against law enforcement throughout her career as a San Francisco liberal. If that police officer hadn't been there, if Kamala Harris had gotten her way, many more students and teachers might have been killed. She was attacked when she ran for president in the Democratic primary. They were calling her Kamala Cop because she was the opposite of what you were saying. But I just want to stay on this topic. Uh, yeah, right. Look at that defending Harris because Harris can't do it for herself. Of school shootings because you're right, it could have been so much worse. And they do have measures in place in this school. But the fact that there are mental health problems, and we don't know exactly what was going on with this 14 year old, 14, um, but there are mental health problems all across the world right now. It's bad. The difference between other countries and this country is that it is being expressed with gun violence. Is, is Here we go. She's going to talk against it. People owning guns, which is wrong. People should own guns. But let's keep listening. Is it not time to, to figure out a way to mitigate that part of the equation when it is affecting our children so often? Well, I think one way to mitigate that is to enforce the laws we have on the books. Donald Trump did that. We had a severe crackdown on criminals using guns. Thank you. Since Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have taken office, they have deprioritized that. They haven't focused on enforcing the laws that we have on the book. They focus on trying to take guns away from law-abiding citizens. That's not going to solve our crime problem. What will solve our crime problem is actually cracking down on gun crimes. 
They've directed U.S. attorneys in many cases not to pursue gun charges because those gun charges come with stiff mandatory minimums, which Kamala Harris so opposes. Are these are these some of? I mean, do you see any action in the in the offing no. at all in the wake of this once again, or is it just going to be enforce the laws on the books? Well, again, enforcing laws on the book is one that one way to stop gun crime. Uh, another way is to keep police officers at schools. Many schools across the country have police officers, but Kamala Harris and her friends on the radical left were successful in getting police officers out of many schools during the BLM rights in 2020 and the uh, what followed. So Congress won't do anything. Well, look, most most law enforcement happens at the local level. These police officers are not federal agents; they're local police de uh, department officers. But again, Kamala Harris and her friends on the radical left who oppose law enforcement, they wanted to get them out of schools. That's one way. It's not the only way, and it's not a silver bullet, but that's one way to help protect these schools, among many others. Before I let you go, if Donald Trump wins, do you want to be defense secretary? I'm focused on Donald Trump winning, just as he's focused on winning. There's plenty of time for him to put together a great team after the election, which I know he will. Somehow I had a feeling that was going to be your answer, but I thought I would try anyway. Senator, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Dan. I really appreciate it. Big shout out. He did a great job uh, pointing out the fact that we don't need all these lefties laws that are in, in book. People are remembering how great it was when Trump was in office and they're going to be making that left to go back to Trump. Hey, let me know what you think. My name is Noel, Bad LMS here at Verbal on Life. I'm trying to point out the obvious, help you guys get more and more information. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button. See you guys on the next one. Peace. Verbal on life. Mm -hmm.